Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's review, we are jumping into one of my favorite styles, as you well know if you've caught most of my videos, Imperial Stouts. And we've got a couple big ones here today. Um, these are very, very highly regarded, uh, both, and uh, they're actually pretty easy to find. If you live in a major metropolitan area that has a decent craft beer selection, chances are you can get your hands on both of these. Um, Total Wine, of course, is, is going to have these in any decently stocked craft uh, bottle shop ought to have them. Um, but uh, we're going to be starting today with the new Holland Brewings uh, Dragon's Milk. This is a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. It's 11% ABV and they are based out of Holland, Michigan. And then number two, one of the absolute most well-known American craft imperial stouts. This is North Coast Brewing Company's Old Rasputin. This is a Russian imperial stout. 9% ABV, and they are based out of Fort Bragg, California. Um, both of these beers, I mean, I can't wait. I, I love them, and I'm ready to jump in with a critical eye. So let's get this started with the New Holland Dragon's Milk, 11%. All right, so jumping straight in with beer number one. This is uh, New Holland Brewing's Dragon's Milk. It's a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. 11% ABV, that's the highest ABV of the bunch, uh, out of Holland, Michigan. Um, bottle art, uh, it's, you know, rather subdued, but it's, it's got a neat little dragon on the label. So I guess that's cool. If you like dragons, <laughs> I'm going to get this poured in the glass. All right. It's not super thick as it pours, and it's uh, rather effervescent, as you may or may not be able to tell from the camera. Um, a little agitation okay now it did form a pretty reasonably tall head to be poured at home but it's not going to be creamy it's just too effervescent for that this head is going to collapse quite quickly a lot of fermentables in there that can sometimes happen as you expect with an imperial stout it is absolutely as black as the night you cannot see any light through that I'm going to give it a sniff okay and it's kind of surprising. It's not the most pronounced aroma in the world. Um, it smells a little sweet and you can just pick up a hint of that bourbon, but it smells like a sweeter kind of stout. Um, I, you know, it just the malts, that's how they're coming off on the aroma on the nose. Yeah. The bourbon does come through pretty, pretty well once you get down in there, but that's about it. And a slight sweetness of the malt. Yeah. All right, let's dive in. Oh, it's been a long time. It's been a very long time. It's a good stout. This is indeed a good stout. Okay, so up front, as soon as you get it in your mouth, you get that bourbon and that slight sweetness. It's not that they aren't deeply, richly roasted malts, but they impart this sweet quality. Now it says dragon's milk. So I don't know if, in fact, this is um, an imperial milk stout that's been bourbon barrel aged, but it does have a slight sweetness. And once that gets out of the way, it opens heavily into bourbon and you get this nice boozy quality about it. The bourbon really comes through and the booze really comes through and it absolutely is one of those that has that nice warming sensation as it goes down. And uh, as soon as that warming sensation and that kind of boozy bite comes in, then the malt starts to come into play and you can taste that it is deeply, richly roasted malts, even though you don't really get it up front and you don't get it on the nose. Um, it does come through in the flavor. It's just after you get that upfront sweetness and that bourbon that just kind of blooms so big and that boozy edge, then the malts come into play. It's very, very nice. This is a very good beer, very enjoyable. I'm going to jump in another sip for Buddy and Mouthfeel and pinpoint this entire finish. The body is medium. You'd expect it to be heavier at 11% ABV, but it's a medium body. The mouthfeel doesn't really feel viscous. Um, it feels very effervescent in the mouth and it feels very smooth. Um, it's not creamy. It feels smooth and effervescent at the same time, but it's, it's not particularly viscous at all. Um, the finish 
exactly as I described. I got it on the first taste. I didn't miss anything in there. Um, the bourbon is really quite prevalent. It's got a pretty long finish to it too. Um, it's still going. I can still taste that bourbon, a slight sweetness in the background. The malts get out of the way after about the first five, six seconds of, of the sip that you take. They really get out of the way. After that bourbon and that boozy edge comes in and then the malts make their presence known with that roasty, it gets out of the way. Then it's completely bourbon and slight sweetness all to the way to the end. But it does have a very long finish. That bourbon really sticks with you in particular. Um, the bourbon, as you might expect, also does impart some kind of caramelized dark brown sugar and just the slightest hint of vanilla to it, just a slight hint on the end. Um, but it mixes very well with what you're tasting and, and that, that little just vestige of the malts. I mean, they're almost completely background, but it does come into play and how they all interplay. It's, it's very, very enjoyable. This is a nice beer. It's been a long time. I'm glad I got to jump back into this one. Um, I'm going to take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores. And when we come back, we will get to our second and final beer today. Uh, the North Coast Brewing's Old Rasputin Russian Imperial Stout at 9% ABV. Okay, now we move on to our second beer of today's Imperial Stout review. This is the venerable North Coast Brewing Company's Old Rasputin. It's a Russian Imperial Stout, 9% ABV out of Fort Bragg, California. This is certainly one of the most well-known and highly regarded uh, Russian Imperial Stouts in the country. Uh, so we're gonna jump in and see exactly why that is today. Um, bottle art, um, pretty cool. It's got uh, Rasputin throwing up a sign <laughs> on his forehead there, kind of funny, but uh, that's about the extent of the bottle art. Um, let's get this one poured in. And this is pretty thick for a 9% and it's very, very dark. It is a Russian Imperial. It's going to be deep and rich and dark, forming a beautiful head here too. Uh, yeah, I think I can get the whole thing in there. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful, creamy, creamy head. All right, holding it up to the light and you cannot see a bit of light through it as expected for an Imperial Stout. Um, looks lovely. It's pretty effervescent too, I can tell you that. Um, it's uh, pretty much impossible to tell via the camera and indeed, even to my eye, I can't really tell except I can just see on the sides of the glass where it's clinging and running up the side. It's very tight, super fine. Really, really fine champagne-like bubbles that are coming up here. Looks great. Um, give it a sniff. That smells nice. Um, it smells a mix of slightly sweet and roasty and actually a little bit boozy. Um, even though it's only 9%, it does have a slight boozy quality to the aroma, which is not uncommon in an Imperial Stout and indeed certainly not in a Russian Imperial Stout either. Um, gonna just break this head down just a little bit with my finger. See if I can get it to settle down just a bit before we jump in. This might help agitate, bring out some more aromas anyway. Yeah, it's got this really wonderful, wonderful smell. It's a beautiful mix of malt, deeply, richly roasted malt, a slight sweetness to it, and just this boozy edge to it, which again, I've said this before, a beer that smells and or tastes boozy, if it's a higher ABV beer, I'm not put off by that at all. Some people are, but you know, it is a high ABV and it does let you know that you're be drinking a bigger beer that has more substance and more ABV in there. You know, it, it's not beer that'll sneak up on you. You know what it is you're drinking when you smell it and when you taste it, uh, when that booze back comes through. So uh, for me, uh, I don't mind it at all. Indeed, I'd rather enjoy it. Often you'll get with those beers that nice warming sensation that's not dissimilar, you know, to scotch or pick your liquor of choice. but. That's settled down about halfway. It's still a little higher than I'd normally jump in, but I don't want to wait. We're going to get in here. Mm. And the aroma. Oh man, that's such a good beer. The aroma does not lie. Exactly what you smell comes through in the beer. Up front, when you first get it in your mouth, there's this slight sweetness and you can taste the malts 
and tell that they're going to be deep and rich, but it's not really until you get it swallowed and all that residual beer finally leaves the palate and goes down. And it just opens up into the richest, deepest, deeply, deeply roasted malts. This beer has some of the most deeply roasted malts I could think of of any beer. Um, it comes through very, very strong flavors of coffee. And this is another one of those where the coffee is a ridiculously deep roast. This is beyond Italian. This is the deep, most deep French roast that, I mean, it's just pulled from the heat source right before the beans burst into flame. It is the deepest, richest, smoky roast that you could possibly get in these malts, just akin to a French roast coffee. It is so good. Now, there is the slightest subtle hint of a booziness when you first get it in your mouth and swallow, and that immediately gets out of the way, and it just, this beer is a story of the malts and the malt bill. It is just so big and bold and rich and deep and in your face. There's nothing subtle about this beer in the slightest. It, it is a beer for people that like them big, bold, and dark, and deeply, deeply roasted. If that sounds like your idea of a good time in a beer, this is worth seeking out if you've never had it. This is well known for a reason. I'm gonna jump in again for body and mouthfeel and make sure I'm not missing anything pertinent in the finish for you. Body is medium heavy. 9% is actually a little bigger than I expect for an ABV like that. It's not low, but it's not the upper echelon of ABV ranges for an Imperial. Mouthfeel is very creamy, very silky. As you'd expect, um, you know, from a stout that formed that creamy of a head, it's gonna have really tight, fine bubbles and that typically, not always, but typically, is going to impart itself to the mouthfeel of the beer. It's also got a nice viscosity to it. So everything that you get up front really sticks around the palate and lingers and lets you continue to explore after each sip. And I did get it right on the first sip. It opens up, starts with this sweetness that just bursts out of the way and it's just a punch in the teeth of these rich, deep, roasted, earthy, just charred, charred malt quality. And it's got a bitter edge to it due to the deep roasted nature of the malts it does impart um, a bit more bitter presence than your average Imperial Stout. Um, and it's very, I mean, it, it's got a very, very long finish. It's very clean, it's very even, and it's very long. I can still taste that deep, rich, roasted, smoky edge to these malts. It, it is just tremendous how long this finish goes on. Um, this beer doesn't cut corners. It doesn't pretend to be anything other than exactly what it's built as. This is a well done, well done Russian Imperial Stout. It's one of my absolute favorites. If somebody said, uh, name a Russian Imperial Stout you would recommend, this would be number one on my list, um, especially if it's somebody that's never had it. And this is actually pretty easy to find. If you live in a big metro area, you're gonna be able to get your hands on this beer very readily. Um, Total Wine's gonna carry it, any reputable bottle shop's gonna carry it. This is not a hard beer to find, and uh, that's a good thing because this beer is always a treat. I absolutely love it. I'm going to take my time sipping on this one, come up with my scores. When we come back, we will get both beers ranked top to bottom. Okay, now that we have gotten to uh, enjoy both of these beers, we're going to get them both ranked top to bottom. Uh, starting with the new Holland Brewing's Dragon's Milk. This was the bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout. 11% ABV on this one out of Holland, Michigan. Uh, starting with the aroma. The aroma was just okay. It was kind of middle of the road. It wasn't super pungent and you really had to get down in the glass to really even discern any aroma. When you did, um, you could pick up the rum and just a little bit of the malt base, but I would have liked it to be a bit more present. Uh, it gets a five. Um, taste. The taste on this was very, very nice. That rum barrel aging made its presence known uh, very much in the forefront of the beer. Um, it had this slight sweetness, this slight booziness, and a little mix of the malt. I would have liked a little more malt presence um, to come through as well, uh, but the rum was the overwhelming uh, flavor that came through, and that's not a bad thing. 
but I would like to taste the base beer as well. It gets a nine out of 10. Uh, body on this. For an 11% Imperial Stout, I expected the body to be quite big and it just wasn't. It was wholly average. I would say it was medium. Maybe at best it was medium and I really expect at least medium heavy for an 11% ABV, ABV beer, it gets a five. Uh, mouthfeel, just like with the body, I expected a lot more presence. I expected more, more viscosity. I expected thickness. I expected the flavors to kind of linger around the palate and it just didn't happen. Again, it gets average, it gets a five. Uh, finish, while the body wasn't heavy and the mouthfeel wasn't viscous, it did have a very, very long finish. It just kept going and going. That rum barrel aging was so present in this beer you could really taste it for the long haul and it just kept going and going and going and going and just lingered. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, head and retention. This was a very effervescent beer and uh, certainly anytime you have a uh, high carbonation activity, it's going to do you a disservice in terms of head creation and retention. As the bubbles are rising up, they just break away that head that's formed and this was no exception. It stuck around okay, but it was just too effervescent to really have any staying power. It gets average, it gets a five out of 10. Uh, appearance wise, this was a textbook Imperial Stout, exactly what you expect. Black as the night when you hold it up, perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, for the balance, this was indeed a very well balanced beer. And I went back and forth on where this should really land on the scale, but for what they did and that they took the time to barrel age it and that didn't get drowned out by anything, I took that into consideration. I just would have liked a little more malt presence to come through, but I still give it a great score. I gave it a nine. Uh, feeling it an intangible, I really, really enjoyed this beer. Um, the rum barrel came through in such a present fashion. I was very, very pleased. If you're gonna barrel age, take the time to make it big and make it known. And they, they definitely accomplished that mission. Um, again, for me, I just would have liked a little more malt backbone to come through in the flavor and aroma profile with this beer, and certainly uh, throughout the length of the finish. It gets a nine. Uh, finally, as an example of the style, this is a well done Imperial Stout. It is not upper echelon, and, and it's really, I'm objectively nitpicking here, but there are many, many, many fantastic offerings out there, barrel aged and otherwise. And this did great in many categories, but it just fell in average in others. So overall, as an example of the style, I give it the high end of average and, and the low end of above average. It gets a seven. That brings the total score on New Holland's Dragon's Milk to a 74 out of 100, which is still a well above average beer. And I certainly recommend it to anybody that's a fan of the style, uh, anybody that likes barrel aged Imperial Stouts or Stouts in general, and uh, certainly anybody that's never tried it, uh, you won't be disappointed. It's a very good beer. Uh, moving on to number two. Uh, North Coast Brewing Company's Old Rasputin. Both of these are some of the most well-known Imperial Stouts in, in America, and certainly for a very good reason. Uh, really, North Coast Old Rasputin needs no introduction. Even novice craft beer drinkers that are getting into Imperial Stouts know this beer. It's not that hard to find, and that's a boon for those of us who are absolute diehard fanatics of craft beer. This is one of the best Russian Imperial Stouts in the country for sure. 9% uh, ABV on this one out of Fort Bragg, California. Uh, the aroma on this. The aroma is nice. Um, it's not super present. It was certainly more present than the Dragon's Milk, but I still just like a little more forward aroma on a beer. I like to be able to pick it up without having to really dig down into the glass and, and sniff uh, ridiculously deeply. Um, above average, it gets a seven. Taste, absolute home run of a beer. This is a textbook Russian Imperial Stout super, super deeply, richly roasted malts. I mean, they just came through in abundance. And um, you know, the malt bill is really the base of the style. It's, it's what makes the beer the beer. And it came through so strongly, so pungently. Um, I mean, I absolutely loved it. And it had that slight boozy quality. It wasn't over, but it was enough to let you know, hey, I'm drinking an Imperial. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, for the body, this was a nice heavy body, especially considering 9% ABV, but I still would have liked more presence, um, even at 9%. There is a lot of competition out in the market that is absolutely moving the game, and this is still a fantastic beer by any yardstick. Um, just, just one point shy, I give it a nine. Uh, mouthfeel, this was a nice thick, 
viscous mouthfeel to this beer. It was also nice and creamy and rich. You could really feel the depth of it. But again, there's so many more options out there in the market. Um, you know, they just pushed that yardstick a little further, so I had to dock a point. It gets a nine for the mouthfeel. For the finish, this was a very, very long finish. If the Dragon's Milk was a long finish, this was even longer. Uh, totally different ends of the spectrum. One was very barrel focused and one was malt based focused, but it just kept going and going and going. That richly roasted malt just lingered. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. A head and retention on this one, this was textbook. It formed a beautifully, beautifully lush, creamy head and it had staying power. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, appearance, just like the Dragon's Milk, it was as black as the night. That's textbook Imperial Stout. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, balance. This is a fantastic example of how to balance a Russian Imperial Stout. The malt is the star of the show. There's a lot of other elements that go into making a beer and the entire beer experience, but the malt is the backbone of this beer style. And this is so bold and in your face and the way that it layers with every other player, it, it's just a treat every time you get to drink it. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, feeling in intangible, this is one of my absolute favorite Russian Imperial Stouts in the world, and it's also regarded by the critics and, and fellow connoisseurs alike as one of the best, and for a very, very good reason. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, this is one of those rare examples that is an absolute masterclass in how to brew the style that they've created. Um, you can't dock any points. This is just an absolute textbook Russian Imperial Stout. Gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Bringing the total score on North Coast's Old Rasputin to a 95 out of 100. So a very, very high score. This is upper echelon, absolute seek out. If you've never had it, it is hands down worth your time and it's not hard to find. So total 21 point spread on these two beers. Um, that sounds like a lot and it kind of is, uh, but they are both excellent, excellent beers. And I would recommend either of these to anybody who's just a fan of this style or that's never had either. These are both worth your time, well worth seeking. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's Imperial Stout review. Uh, as always, I do sincerely thank you for tuning in today. Um, you know the drill by now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already done. So uh, comments, comments are really big. Please do comment. I want to interact with you. I want to know your thoughts, opinions, things you want to see, things you don't want to see, ideas you have, questions you have. Anything you want to tell me, let me know in the comments. Um, lastly, if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live on YouTube, just click the little notification bell. It's right next to the subscribe button. Uh, it'll let you know right when our videos go live to YouTube. Folks, till next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.